Once in the mountainous province of Japan, there lived a monk named Izamu. Izamu was a man of wisdom, one who spent his days meditating and tending to his garden, a solitary sanctuary flourishing with diverse flora. As word of Izamu's wisdom spread, many came to seek his advice. Among these were two young men, Nobu and Hiroshi, who claimed to be the best of friends. They journeyed to the mountains seeking enlightenment on their intertwined path. Isamu-san, they greeted the monk, bowing deeply. We've come to seek your guidance. We've been inseparable since childhood, but recently our bond has strained. We're hoping you can help us mend it. The monk invited them into his garden, a peaceful space that reflected the serene tranquility of his mind. Under a blossoming cherry blossom tree, they seated themselves, the falling petals a silent audience to their unfolding tale. Nobu was the first to speak. He described Hiroshi as a trustworthy friend, a companion he held dear. He admitted, however, that lately Hiroshi seemed distant, his actions inconsistent with the brotherhood they had built over the years. Hiroshi, in turn, acknowledged his recent aloofness, but blamed it on his own struggles. He promised to improve, assuring his friend that he cherished their friendship above everything else. His words, laced with eloquence, seemed sincere. Izamu listened to their words, observing the underlying tension between them. The monk, a seasoned observer of human nature, discerned that the surface narrative bore discrepancies. He knew it was time to help them discover the truth. The next morning, Isamu suggested they participate in a Zen practice known as working meditation. He split them up, assigning Hiroshi to tend to the lush garden, while Nobu was tasked to organize the monk's scriptures. Days turned into weeks. Every day, Nobu painstakingly rearranged the scripts, absorbed in his duty, while Hiroshi maintained the garden, pruning the trees and nurturing the flowers. Isamu, in the meantime, watched their actions closely. One afternoon, as Nobu was deep into his task, Hiroshi approached him. Nobu, he said, I've finished my tasks early. Let me help you with yours. The offer, although generous, felt out of place to Nobu, contradicting Hiroshi's previous indifference. However, Nobu accepted, grateful for the help. As the sun set, Isamu found the scriptures meticulously organized. He also noticed that a few important ones were missing. Confronted with the situation, Nobu was baffled. He swore to have never misplaced them. Isamu then asked Hiroshi if he knew about the missing scriptures. Hiroshi feigned ignorance, but promised to help find them. Days passed, but the scriptures were nowhere to be found. Hiroshi, however, seemed oddly unperturbed by the mystery. Nobu was troubled, filled with guilt for losing the scriptures. He couldn't comprehend how they disappeared. Isamu, perceiving Nobu's distress, comforted him. The truth always finds its way out, my son, he assured Nobu. One evening, while Hiroshi was away, Isamu suggested Nobu clean the tool shed, a place Hiroshi frequented. Nobu, eager to redeem himself, agreed. As he sorted through the tools, he stumbled upon the missing scriptures, tucked away behind old pots. He was shocked, and a cold realization began to set in. Nobu, grappling with the revelation, rushed to Isamu. He showed the monk the missing scriptures, his eyes filled with hurt and confusion. Isamu, witnessing the boy's pain, knew it was time to unmask the deceit. When Hiroshi returned, Isamu confronted him about the scriptures. At first, Hiroshi denied any involvement, but the truth was irrefutable. Cornered, he admitted his actions, revealing his true colors. He had hoped to sabotage Nobu, blaming his own failures on his friend. The deceit shocked Nobu, but it also clarified the conflict that had been brewing. Hiroshi, despite his eloquent words of brotherhood, had been a false friend. His actions, hidden behind a facade of concern, had been toxic and selfish. Isamu then offered them a final piece of wisdom. A true friend is consistent in his words and actions. Deceit can wear the mask of sincerity, but the truth always shines through in the end. Let this be a lesson to you both. Hiroshi, filled with guilt and shame, departed from the monastery, leaving Nobu and Izamu. Nobu, although hurt, found solace in the harsh truth. He thanked Izamu for his wisdom and vowed to seek friendships based on genuine actions rather than empty words. This story teaches us a valuable lesson about recognizing false friends. In life, it's essential to discern actions from words. A true friend is consistent in both. They uplift you share your burdens and their actions align with their words.
Recognizing a false friend can be tough, but this knowledge guides us in distinguishing sincerity from deceit. Let this Zen wisdom illuminate your path and enrich your friendships. We hope you enjoyed this short story. Stay tuned for more content to inspire and guide you on your path. Remember, you're not alone in this journey of self-discovery. Find peace, clarity, and fulfillment along the way. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.